The $700 billion taxpayer bailout of the financial and automobile industries could cost you a lot more than that. The government's chief watchdog of the bailout will tell Congress tomorrow that worst case scenario, the price tag could total $23.7 trillion. In other economic news, the index of leading indicators is up for the third straight month. That's the latest sign that we could see an end of the recession later this year. President Obama in April ordered his cabinet secretaries to identify at least $100 million in additional spending cuts within 90 days. Three months later, we are still waiting for details. Today, White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs said, quote, we'll release something in the coming days. Meanwhile, the federal government is continuing to spend taxpayer money at an incredible rate, a trillion dollars over the past three months alone. A hundred million isn't much, but it might help. Even more disturbing, Politico today reported all the government bailouts, loans, and rescues could ultimately cost taxpayers a staggering $23 trillion. That number comes from Neil Borofsky. He's the special inspector for the Treasury's TARP program. $23 trillion is nearly double the annual size of this nation's entire economy, $14 trillion. Hello, America. Here's your hot list. Some common sense solutions. The stories the mainstream media is not covering and they're not doing their job on this, by the way, will break tomorrow. This is just given to me that the um, the bailout costs now, according to just some schlub, oh, just the inspector general for the Treasury's uh, troubled asset relief program, says that, um, you know, it was. You know, it was, you know, was going to be like three billion and then or trillion, and then it was going to be nine trillion. Looks like now it's only going to be twenty-three point seven trillion dollars to bail out the financial companies. For tarp. just, but that's only just. I mean, it's only almost twenty-four trillion dollars. <laughs> Well, the cost of rescuing the economy could add up to a lot more than many people expected. The government's chief watchdog at the bailout has come up with a worst-case scenario, and the price tag is a staggering $23.7 trillion. Mm. Mm -hmm. CNN's Christine Roman's minding your business this morning to break it down for us. Look at that figure. It I fills know. up our entire big screen vista wall. And there. we've been telling you for months, this is trillions and trillions of guarantees and loans and promises and backstops for the financial industry and for the economy. So we knew it was a really big number. This is the first time we've seen a price tag quite this big. Mm -hmm. And again, this isn't total potential losses. This is how much money has been guaranteed out there. It doesn't count all the collateral that's been put up against. It doesn't count the money that's been paid back to taxpayers. So let me roll down for you what the SIGTARP, the worst acronym ever to come out of Washington, the special and Inspector General of the Troubled Asset Relief Plan, SIGTARP, you're going to hear it again. This is the bailout cop, uh, and this is what he found in his first big report. Um, excuse me. TARP has created 12 programs involving $3 trillion. They've launched 35 investigations of, of waste and pilfering and, and mismanagement. Uh, the rescue efforts overall, the total potential government support is the way they put it, could top uh, $23.7 trillion. Now, a Treasury official calls that a distorted number. It doesn't uh, take into account the fees and interest that has been paid fees and interest like this taxpayers have had six billion in in dividend payments payments paid back 200 million in interest payments and also um, you look there was a, a a bridge loan to jp morgan chase to buy bear stearns it was i think 14 billion dollars that's been paid back in full with interest mm -hmm. and dividends there are other things like that that we've gotten money back for so the 23 trillion number it's a huge number but you know serious economists will look at that number and say hmm they'll be able to kind of pull back where where that that's that would be that would essentially be the the United States stopping right. just stopping business completely if we were to lose all that money but the